So I just finished this video and it's got some kind of graphic stuff uh, that kind of might, it, it's a little bit real world. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know uh, that it's there. So if you just want to minimize the video and listen to it or put it on another monitor or something, no shame in that. Just be aware there's some, there's some graphic imagery here, but let's get going. Hello everyone, Mark with Cardivox Academy here. And I don't know why I'm talking like that. I have no idea. <laughs> Mark with Cardivox Academy here, and if you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Mark. I'm the vocalist of Kardashev, Viremia, and a upcoming black metal project called Neverbreath. You can read about them below. And if at the end of this video or now you feel like you really enjoy the content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Helps out a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, we all get pretty interactive in the comments and in the Facebook community page, so... Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you're feeling real froggy, hit that bell and you'll know when I upload videos in the future. Last thing I want to talk about really super quick is that in our last video, we announced that there was going to be a raffle. Uh, we are going to draw the winners for that raffle. They submitted uh, vocal sections for an instrumental part of a Kardashev song that's coming out soon. And we're going to pick them at random and we're going to see who wins. There are three places, three sets of prizes. Get excited. That'll be at the end. And okay, my apologies. Last, last thing. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Riley. He, uh, this isn't a sponsored section here. He's just a really freaking rad dude who makes really rad art. He did a Rick and Morty thing of us dudes and Kardashev. It's really cool. We've been Rick and Mortified. Somebody's probably already made that joke, but I feel proud of it. Um, and he's done a lot of other cool stuff too for some, some bigger names. Um, so if you like his work, check out the link below, hit him up. He does commissions. He does a great job. Super professional, really good guy. Okay. So let's get into benighted. Let's get into benighted. Let's do it. I'm feeling fresh. Uh, so Benighted has been around for a while, 1998. I was 10 years old. That is a fun fact. <laughs> um, yeah, so their vocalist, Julian, Julian, um, Julian, I'm not sure. He uh, He's a really cool vocalist. A lot of variety. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes when you have like more of a, like a traditional death metal band, um, the vocals, and this isn't a bad thing, but the vocals tend to be kind of like one or two styles. This guy's got a lot going on. Um, he has a different approach than I do on, on certain things, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Um, that's one of my favorite things about metal vocals is that as long as you're being safe, there are a lot of different ways that you could do the same thing. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I found a really cool frame of this guy looking aggressive, uh, but let's see what's going on. I've heard this video is a little weird. I was talking to Alex about it and he's like, heads up, this video is a little gross. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out, right? So we're 30, 36 seconds in, and we've had quite a bit of vocal variety already. Um, so we started out with what, I mean, you could approach it false chord or fry. Sounds like he might be approaching it as a fry. Really, honestly, um, approach it however you want, as long as you're being safe. But uh, kind of a tight, sort of thin, thin uh, tube of a vocal cavity, uh, which sounded really cool. Let, let's hear it again, and then we'll try to get a little bit more detail into what's going on. Yeah, so I would I, I would approach a false chord just because that's that's what I do. Um, I like false chord. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, like kind of a thinner uh, a thinner mouth shape right here. I don't know the lyrics. Um, 
but that's about how I would approach it. Then he's got some really cool lows. One thing I like about Julian's lows is that he is not one of those vocalists. A lot of his lows, when you listen to him, you can tell that they're not necessarily super loud because he's got a good amount of compression and he's using just a tiny bit of air to get his uh, to get his lows through. And that gives it a really cool, like girthy, bubbly sound. So like a really like a really um, strong, loud low. Well, his vocals are really strong. That's not what I mean to say, but like a really, um, a really, a louder low is going to sound more like, and that's a really cool, like death core sound. He tends to go for more of like an, and that has like that slower, that slower rattly distortion, which is a lot of fun. Let's keep going, but certain things to think about. See? You can hear that slow rattle there. Listen to him open that up. That was really cool. So we had some super cool, super high um, uh, pig squeals, which I love. Um, and then, you know, in his chorus, it sounds like he says, crack the ruins of my nails. That's another example of how you don't, it, it doesn't sound like he's going for a lot of volume or necessarily a lot of like push, so to speak. Because instead of going, crack the ruins of my nails which you would hear a lot of in, in like um, other genres. He, I feel like if we could see him tracking this, it would look more like, crack the ruins of my nose. And then just a couple layers of that, um, which I think is cool. Adds to articulation, adds to like that slow, wet, rattly sound. Let's keep going. Oh my nose. How about that riff? <laughs> What is she doing? I don't know, but let's talk about those highs he just did, because that was kind of cool. I don't know where the video's going, <laughs> but well, let's talk about those highs. Um, so we actually just had recently had a discussion about soft palette uh, placement in the Cardavox Academy community page, and... You know, in a lot of vocals, we talk about having a raised soft palate, and I usually start with my students talking about a raised soft palate, but we can actually, we can also lower the soft palate to get more of like a chewy, forward, uh, tight and thin sound. A, lo a lot of what people attribute to being like a goblin, a goblin high. Uh, so for example, uh, like a high raised soft palate, um, which you can feel just by yawning, that's a really common exercise, just yawn, oh, and you'll get that raised soft palate. But a high raised soft palate uh, for, you know, something like this. That's a really cool high. Like this right here. And then, oh, I'm ducking behind the frame. What am I doing? I should be going this way. Anyways, but if we go kind of thinner and we kind of hold back a little bit on the projection. My soft palate's actually a, little, a lot lower. In fact, I, I allow it to tap against the back of my tongue every once in a while just to give it sort of a, a really dirty sound. He's not quite going that extreme with it, but that's kind of where it sounds like it's going to me. Again, he and I may approach it differently, but it's really, really a cool variation. Let's keep going. <laughs> What is that? How about that? How about that whale? Um, now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that right now 
uh, because, <laughs> funny story, my fiance is working from home, and she's on a conference call right now, right now, and um, I'm really hoping <laughs> that the people she's having a conference call can't hear me. They'll definitely hear that, uh, but let me talk a little bit about what's going on. So there are a couple ways you can approach it, of course. He had a little bit of that ever so sought after uh, whistle going on. Um, but I do some stuff like this, similar to this in my band's recent album, um, The Almanac. And really, you can just sort of treat it like a uh, like a distorted, controlled yell. Obviously, you can play around with the balance. He's got a really uh, he's got a lot of relaxation going on, and you can hear that from the sort of inconsistency in the the tonality of his voice. Instead of like you know, oh, I can't do it because she's on that conference call. Um, well, we'll listen to it again, and instead of being like a real clean and consistent ah underneath that distortion, it's like ah. You hear a little bit of that break. Now, obviously, what I just did because it's super quiet and not distorted doesn't exactly sound like that, but ah, like that that relaxed and uncontrolled vocal breaking underneath it is kind of what you're hearing. Now, here's the thing about this sound he's making. Um, it's really easy to create that sound, and it's really easy to create it the wrong way. Anytime we're adding our, our tonality and our voice underneath our screams, we got to understand that we're running a, a little bit of a risk. Now, I'm not... If for some reason <laughs> Julian sees this, I'm not sitting here saying you're doing it wrong. But what I am saying is that it's very easy to build up a little too much of what we call subglottic pressure. It's pressure underneath your actual vocal folds. Um, and if you build that up and you push your, vo your, your air against it, bam, and you slam against the bottom of it, um, you can not only hurt yourself you know, in the moment, it doesn't feel good if you've ever done it, which I have back when I was first getting started. Um, it can be quite painful. And if you don't pay attention to that, um, that's a quick way to get uh, like vocal nodules, polyps, things like that. Now, as I've said many times, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a ENT or a speech therapist, uh, but I do know that that is, that is uh, something you need to avoid. So honestly, unless you've really got that type of like tonal scream down, I would say work on other things first, work on consistent airflow, uh, work on diaphragm control, work on frontal resonance. I am a huge proponent of whenever you're screaming, just sticking with frontal resonance pretty much all the time. But anyways, uh, that is your safety lecture for the day. And if you want more safety lectures from me, like, share, and subscribe. Really though, safety is very important. Let's keep going. What is of my nails. That's cool. That's a sick riff. So I don't know what is going on in this video. <laughs> I don't know. But let's talk about some of those vocals because we almost just got into slam territory. What the heck? What the heck's going on? Let's let's go back. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're. I, well, we all know what they're doing, but I, why? I couldn't tell you. Well, we all know what. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before we get to this second part, I want to talk about a little bit of what we've heard uh, so far. So, one thing that really is cool. One thing that I really like, um, 
is like quick staccato punchy vocals doesn't always work over every section but that's what we've got here and that's kind of one of the things that when you think of like slam vocals not always but when you think of slam vocals you kind of you kind of envision and I really enjoy that we just got some of that here another thing that we're gonna we're gonna um you know if we want that sort of like piggy slammy uh sound is like we talked about a little while ago um earlier in the video you, you don't need a whole lot of airflow and you don't necessarily have to care too much about volume if you can be loud sure great but loudness isn't like the defining factor so for example um you know keeping like a low uh, 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 like this is your position for that uh, 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 and finding that position where that like that like bright almost harmonic sound is coming through that sort of whistly found it from there and then you do a low but you like hold back on it see i'm not really pushing out a lot of a lot of volume even there just playing around with that tongue position to get basically the slower rattle and if you get really slow and really defined, you can get that weird cricket vocal that a lot of people inhale it. We're not going to inhale anything except for air because you got to breathe. But anyway, that slower. It's cool sound and I like it. Also, don't don't underestimate the uh, you know, we all talk about a lower jaw and that's good. You want to do it. But sometimes and you don't need much of this very sparingly. A little bit goes a long way. You can kind of pull your jaw back. You don't necessarily have to like tuck your head. But instead of going like <coughs> that, like big open, you can kind of pull it back. <coughs> See that? You can hear the difference between the placement and please don't don't like shove your jaw all over the place. A little bit goes a long way. If you're if if you're doing it and you're really feeling any extra effort in your actual jaw, the joint itself, you're doing too much work. So, something to think about. <coughs> There it is. That's the song. Three minutes and 28 seconds. Not bad. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Well, that was Nails by Benighted. Really cool stuff. Vocal style is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but still a lot of fun to play with. A lot of cool things that you can do. Playing around with your jaw position. <clears throat> uh, playing around with your tongue. You don't always have to do gutturals with your tongue up. You, you, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. Um, also, you know, playing around with your soft palate placement, keeping it raised on highs, letting it lower on highs. Again, that's one of the craziest and coolest thing about metal vocals is that, you know, as long as you're being safe, as long as you're not putting a lot of, or, you know, you're not putting that effort on your vocal folds, you're not straining your neck, mu neck muscles, you're staying relaxed. Um, it's a playground, y'all. Metal vocals are a playground for all of us to play in as long as we're being safe. But anyways, again, if you like the content, if you enjoy the video, if you want to learn more about metal vocals or you just want to be a better metal vocalist, uh, like, share, subscribe, check out the channel, look at my other videos. Let's get on to that uh, drawing, that raffle. Let's see who our winners are. 
Okay, so I had a couple different ways I wanted to do this. Uh, you know, there are different websites where you can enter things into a table and it'll pick a winner at random. Um, and honestly, I just really didn't want to transpose or move all of the, the entries over. We had um, 150, actually 100, let me fix this, 152. Uh, we had 152 people who submitted. Um, in an effort to, so I just have my inbox pulled up um, and we're going to pick a number and then I'll count down. I won't make, if I get a number like 89, I'll <laughs> I won't make you watch me count 89. I have that on my other monitor um, just because I don't want to be putting people's emails, addre email addresses up here. It's not really respectful of their privacy. So let's go ahead and see who our first winner is. Remember there are three, the, the first place winner gets um, a free lesson with me as well as two shirts of their choice and an entire discography of Kardashev's music. The second place winner gets the two shirts and the full discography and the third place winner gets the full discography. So let's see who our winner number one is. And the first place winner, we're gonna listen to their submission uh, together right now. And I'll talk a little bit about what we're probably gonna go over in lesson number one. All right, so here we go. Let's let's uh, make sure this says 152. Hey, -o. all right, let's generate. Go. 127. All right, I'm going to count from the bottom up. Be right back. Okay, so our first place winner, the winner of the free lesson with me, the two free shirts from our Kardashev's online store, and also the full digital discography is our good friend Cade. Cade, good job. I just counted it. Um, let's listen to your submission together, and I'll give you a little insight into what we're going to go over in our first lesson. So let's check it out. Let me pull it up here. Let me make sure my levels are looking okay. All right, let's go. All right, cool. So, Cade, um, first of all, awesome entry. Good job. Um, I heard you attempting some tunnels, some lows, some highs. You're definitely going for you know, that large range, which I think is really exciting. A couple things we're going to work on. Uh, we're going to work on giving you a little bit more oomph underneath your lows, more than likely, uh, because you're, you're definitely on the right track. Um, but right now what we have is a little bit, a little bit, um, um, a little bit uncontrolled, which is totally fine. We're going to, we're going to get your diaphragm in there. I'm going to teach you how to breathe properly. I'm going to teach you how to manage that breath. So you have something even and consistent. Um, and then on your highs, what we're going to focus on is just bringing that distortion up a little bit because it sounded very wet and low and sometimes wet and low is good. And other times wet and low is bad. Um, and it's only bad when it's getting kind of close to your vocal folds. And it sounded like you don't have full control over your soft palate. So we're going to work on that as well. Lows, breath, uh, and uh, and more control over your actual articulators, the the soft palate, the tongue, everything like that. Let's find our second place winner now. Okay, our second <laughs> our second place winner is number seventy one. I'm seeing why people like to take the time to put all the stuff in the in the raffle. Uh, the websites that'll that'll basically just pull the raffle for you. We're definitely going to do that next time because I think we'll do these raffles every once in a while. Um, but <laughs> Bear with me, I've got some more counting to do. Hold on. All right, so our second place winner, our winner of the two shirts and the full digital discography is Lena, or Lena, I'm sorry if it's Lena and not Lena, or I, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Um, but let's go ahead and see what's, uh, what's going on here. This will be kind of cool. And even though you don't have the free lesson, I'll give you some feedback um, and kind of some pointers on, I don't know, whatever you're about to do. So let's hear it. Time and time is ticking. We got cleans, people. I was hoping somebody would submit cleans. Yes, good job. Let's let's listen to it. Time and time is ticking away. Regret the autumn that price to pay. All those that lead you astray. Watch your voices, your voices, what they have to say. So get up and cut it out. Sever yourself from the dark. If you feel it, then shout. You'll 
dreams make them proud Stand out from the crowd Sitting on a cloud Cool. Okay. First of all, um, let me give you some feedback on that. So um, y- you you definitely have a really nice voice, a very nice starting point. Um, the th- I could hear you kind of trying to shift the resonance forward. That was really nice. Um, I also really like that you have some vibrato naturally coming through. Really, the only thing I would say is um, look into holding your ribs out while you're uh, while you're while you're singing. Um, and using the, the stomach muscles just to kind of control the airflow a little bit. There were some places where it sounded like the airflow was a little inconsistent, uh, but that's something that we all need to work on. Um, intonation was good, but it's going to basically, um, any sort of issues we had with intonation in this, um, or any sort of issues we had with maybe lack of consistent airflow is going to just basically come from, from, uh, breath support. And if, if we were in a lesson, that's really where I would start because, the the melodies you were going for were really nice and you were you were hitting them pretty well but i think if you had a little bit more support underneath um i don't remember the melody but when we're trying to intonate we got to make sure we have enough air to control basically what we want to do so for example if i don't have enough air and i'm trying to go between notes it's a lot more likely that i'm going to hit a flat or a sharp uh, but really you did a great job um i <laughs> I almost, <laughs> I almost wish you had one because I think it'd be really cool. I think we could just tune you up here in just a couple lessons. But focus on breath support um, and maybe just adding a little bit more openness in your mouth. I couldn't see it, but it sounded like maybe we could get a little bit more openness in the mouth to resonate things and make those notes a little bit stronger, make the whole thing a little bit stronger. But honestly, this was this was a great um, this was a great submission, and I'm so glad that you submitted cleans. Beautifully done. Well job. I just said well job. No, good job. Well done, good job. I speak English, I promise. Y'all, for our third place winner, we got a number 23. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Let's hear who it is. Okay, one moment. Okay, so we have voc. I think it's supposed to say vocal, vocart, vocart list. It's V-O-C-4-R-T-L-I-S-T. However you pronounce that, you've won <laughs> the full digital discography. Um which uh, which will get out to you. Um, so let's go ahead and let's hear let's hear this submission. Let's see what we got. punch da, 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 da. right before the open section hits creative um that was dope that was really awesome the only thing i would say to check on is um well uh, before that um i really love the chewy kind of gobliny <laughs> highs that you have going i love that sound i love that sound and you do a really good job there are a couple places though where it sounded like your distortion fell back a little bit and i would say just keep an eye on that um, cause anytime our distortion is falling back, it's harder to control. And any, anytime we don't have as much control over our distortion, um, you know, it's, it's possible we could be causing some pain or strain or anything like that. Um, so I would say, you know, if you don't already just work some frontal resonance exercises, um, into what you're already doing. Uh, but that was great. The, that was great. The quality of it was really good. I would say maybe just try to fine tune it with a little bit of frontal resonance. Um, but really good, good job. Great job. Anyways, for our winners, I'll be reaching out to you by email so you can go ahead and uh, we can talk about how you'll be able to claim these wonderful prizes. Um, but thank you again for submitting. Thank you again, all of you, for watching if you've made it through this whole video. And uh, as always, if you like the content, if you like learning about metal vocals, uh, seeing how certain people approach things differently, 
be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. All the same stuff you always hear, but it really does help, especially, uh, especially um, you know, when we're trying to grow the channel and, and reach out to as many people as possible. And with that, as always, many thanks, much love. I'm out.